Hey guys, I am back with another Slime Rancher guide, another toasty tutorial, and this time I'm going to go over everything you need to know about Ogden's Retreat and the Wilds. So let's start with the basics. The first thing you need to know is how to unlock the Wilds. Number one, you have to unlock the Moss Blanket. Number two, you have to unlock the Overgrowth. And three, you have to complete at least one trade on the exchange with Ogden Ortiz, who is the character that was introduced earlier that actually owns the retreat and who you'll be trading with once you get to the wilds. Once you've done all three, you should receive new star mail from Ogden Ortiz with the subject partnership. And that star mail is him inviting you to come and join him at the retreat. Now, once all of that is said and done, it's going to unlock a new teleporter right off the ranch before you get to the overgrowth in this little corner. And this is the teleporter that will lead you to Ogden's retreat and subsequently to the wild. So let's head there now. Now, once you get to the retreat, you're going to notice a couple of things. First is the fact that there is an exchange here with Ogden's face on it. And here is Ogden's retreat right here, though you cannot actually go into it the way that you can go into your own. Um, I was hoping that once I unlocked everything in the wilds, it would become functional, and I have, and it hasn't. So <laughs> I don't really know why that's there. It, even this, you can sit here and choose to change the colors the same way that you can on yours, but it's not actually reflected. So hopefully at some point that'll become functional, but for now it's not. And over here is the teleporter to the actual wilds. And over here, you're going to see a bunch of empty corrals behind a barrier. Now, I'm thinking that I do have footage of that. Uh, right now, I have everything unlocked, so... Now, once you go up to the exchange, Ogden's gonna tell you all about what he needs. He really, really, really wants the delicious Kukadoba fruit, and the more you trade him, the more goodies he's gonna give you in return. Now, one of them is spicy tofu, which you get for every three Kukadobas that you trade to Ogden. Now, the tofu is great because you can feed it to any slime and it'll help with their hunger, but it is not the favorite food of any slime, including the new sabers that have been introduced with this update. So you're not going to get double plorts or anything for feeding any of them. It's really just an easy way to get them fed without having to go out and find specific vegetables, meats, or fruits. Now, once you finish your very first set of trades with him and he goes through his story, it's going to open up the rest of the things that you can unlock. Now the first tier is trading an additional 75 Kukadoba fruit and for that you're going to get the miracle mix and that's really cool because you can apply that to your garden and it's going to keep the fruit from rotting as quickly as they normally do you know as long as they're actually on the plot not if they fall off the plot and bounce somewhere else into the ranch. The second tier is the deluxe upgrade and that's going to cost you an additional 120 Kukadoba fruit and the deluxe upgrade I think is the coolest out of all of them because it's going to allow you to have an even bigger harvest than you normally do and I'm going to actually show you that in real time or in time lapse so that you can see what it looks like because I think that's really cool. And the final tier which you get for an additional 150 Kukadoba fruit is unlocking the retreat. You get to own it, you get to keep it, and that means the barrier comes down and all those empty corrals that you could only dream of touching before are now yours. So now that I've covered all the trades, let's head into the wild and get some. Okay, now the funny thing about the wild is that there are teleporters all over the place. And once you get here, you see that the teleporter you came through is going to be deactivated. Now, before there was a patch to this update, whenever you would find a teleporter, it would take you all the way back to your ranch, which meant that if you wanted to go back to Ogden's retreat, you'd have to go all the way back to the other teleporter near the overgrowth, which was really annoying. But luckily the devs, I guess, got the hint that that was something that we didn't like, I guess, and they changed it. So now whenever you find a teleporter in the wild, it is actually gonna take you straight back to Ogden's retreat. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. And the one thing I will say is that the teleporters do randomize. However, there is always one teleporter in one space that you can take. So it's not like you'll just be lost forever in the wilds and not be able to get back home. That one teleporter in the distance is always there. Now getting down to the nitty gritty of actually collecting the Kukadoba fruit, that's pretty simple. You know, unfortunately there aren't any tips or tricks to it. You just have to go through and do it. Uh, but it doesn't take that long. You know, the wilds are not that big. And if you just run all the way through collecting whatever Kukadoba fruit you find, you're going to end up with maybe 30 or so each time. Now, when you come across them, there will be a lot of ones that are loose like this. So you just pick them up. Um, I'll also show you what they look like when they're on a bush like this. Um, they're very easy to spot, you know, not anything that's hidden from sight. So you can just snap them up. 
and there will also sometimes be on the side of a wall so you've got to look up sometimes as well to get those this is also one of the ways you'll find them it's a mud ball and this is excuse me guys excuse me i am trying to tell people about things and these are exactly what they sound like they're mud balls uh, that some of these saber slimes and uh, other slimes like to put together so what you want to do with these slime balls is you're going to find some of these contraptions here which are basically like nutcrackers and you want to shoot this into oh my god oh my god get away from me please you want to shoot these into this contraption and it's go oh my god and it's going to spit out five kookadoba fruit so you want to go ahead and do that um if you can find them oh my god am i gonna die what is happening so yeah, you want to do that whenever you find them <laughs> um, and uh, collect them because that's obviously the fastest way to rack up some kookadoba. You'll also notice that none of the slime actually eat the kookadoba fruits, even if you shoot it at their faces. So you don't have to worry about them eating it uh, if it's falling away. You just go up and gather it. So we're going to gather what we can. So I'm just going to go up here and continue gathering. Now, when you throw these into the contraption here, I say it's easiest to just hold your vacuum on it so that you can pick it up as it shoots out, uh, just to make it easier for you so they don't go all over the place. Um, let me get these chickens here. And one thing about the wilds is that you will only ever come across Largos. There are no pure saber slimes here. So, you know, unfortunately, if you were looking forward to that, like to just seeing what the saber slime looks like, really the only thing you can do is look at the picture of it in the Slimepedia because you're not going to find it anywhere in the wilds. So here's an example of what they look like when they're on the side. You know, not as easy to see at night, but that doesn't matter. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of Largos here and Largos are all feral by nature. So if you don't want to get chomped on every five minutes, you'll probably want to come with a lot of food. I think it's easiest to just bring a lot of hens because most of them are some kind of mix that eats meat. And once you get over to this area, like you, you basically memorize what the wilds are like. There isn't a map accessible for it, so you know you just have to remember where things are, and it's pretty easy too. You know, this area is the area that I like to say has lots of islands, and this is also where the perpetual teleporter is, the one that I said never goes away, that you can always get to. It's here, okay? It's on the back of this. Uh, again, I can't show you on the map because the map isn't accessible, but that just gives you an idea of what this area looks like. You just keep running around, getting as many fruits as you can, as many of them as you find, wherever you find them. Now, since I already finished all the collecting and everything, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the wilds. You can do that yourself. Just run around and explore. You know, that's the whole point. Find these new locations, find little hidden nooks and crannies, and keep bringing those fruits back to Ogden until you've unlocked all the upgrades. Now, I want to mention that I did find two pods, I think, in the wilds while I was here. I don't know how many there actually are. Uh, but I'll at least tell you where the two were that I found. Now, one of the easiest landmarks here is to come up where the bridge is um, at the kind of highest point of the wilds. Now, once you get here, you can see it's across from the waterfall. And again, there's one of the machines behind you. So you just want to cross the bridge. And you want to head straight up here. Just head straight on up. And take a little hoppy to hop. And there you go. Here's where one pod was. It was a green treasure pod. I don't remember what was in it, but at least you know where it is. The second one is when you come to this area where there are lots of bridges across. Again, you'll know it once you see it and once you get to it. And you want to come all the way up to the top where this contraption is and look straight across. Uh, now it's actually over there. So this is how I'm going to get to it. And this one I actually didn't collect yet. So we'll see what's in it together. Whee! Excuse me, go away please. And I think I should mention that if you really wanna be successful in the wilds and really getting to all of the little hidden places and little hidden nooks and crannies, you need to have as many of the upgrades as you can get for your vacuum um, and for your you know booster pack and everything. Excuse me, Tabby Largo. I did not ask for you. Uh, so just make sure that you have as much of your uh, stamina and everything as you can get, seriously. I want to let you live, but if you keep snapping at my butt. All right, you know what? Goodbye. Yeah. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. 
All right, so you want to uh, do that because otherwise you're not going to be able to reach a lot of the locations in the wilds to begin with. So just, just get as many upgrades as you can. Yeah, let's see what's in this pod. Oh, it's just supplies. Whatever, I don't really care about that. Now the third treasure pod was once you get back to the area here that I call the islands, and that one's easy to spot. You got one of the contraptions over here, and the pod was actually sitting down here. Again, I don't remember what was in that one when I got it, but at least you know where it is. So those were actually the three pods that I found uh, in the wilds. I, again, I don't know if there are more than that, but uh, that, that's what I got. So then we've gone around and seen a little bit of what the wilds has to offer. Again, it's really about the exploration. So, you know, that's something you can do on your own. I'm going to now head back to the retreat so I can show you some of what I unlocked. Okay, so here we are back at Ogden's retreat. Now, uh, this is basically what you're going to be doing through the whole grind. You're going to be going to the wild, getting fruit, bringing it back, and trading it with Ogden. Um, again, as you do it, you're going to unlock uh, different stories and things from him as you go until you finally unlock everything, including access to the corrals. So I'm just throwing all this in here because I got it. And as you saw, I got like 55 or something of them, and I wasn't even trying that hard. So it's really not difficult to collect enough Kukadoba fruit. Just go out there and do it. You know, enjoy the wilds and enjoy exploring. Now, once you do all of that and you unlock everything and the barrier comes down, you get all the wonderful corrals to play with. Now, this is what I chose to do with this area. I chose to make it the area for my uh, Tangle Mosaics because I like having my slime free roam and I just think they're so pretty. And I also decided to just put two ponds here and then uh, some of these fruit trees, which they don't actually eat. They only eat veggies and meat, but I just really love the color of the uh, mint mango, and I just love the way the trees look. They're my favorite ones in the game. So that's why I put it there, even though I can't feed them with it. I don't care, uh, because I carry meat with me when I come. So here, eat, eat and have your fill. And of course you can also feed them the spicy tofu, because again, they will all eat that. It doesn't matter who they are, go ahead, yes, eat, eat. They'll just all eat that and happily not say anything about it. Spicy tofu, spicy tofu for all. Uh, and also these trees um, are trees that I built and I just put here. So uh, don't think that those are actually here. Um, these are just, again, some of my favorite trees, these yellow ones and uh, the pink ones, I think, I also really like. So this was basically just me sprucing this place up. Um, I also added some silver parsnip here to feed them uh, because the silver parsnip is the mosaic slime's favorite uh, vegetable. And then over here, this is the rest of the area that you couldn't get to before. So you see you've got a little hut here, which is just for decoration because you know, you can't go in here, obviously. But what it does have is a little toy machine because these saber slimes do actually have a toy that calms them as well. And since you can't bring toys through the teleporters, really this is the only way that you're going to get one to a saber slime is to unlock this area and then add some saber slimes in here and then check out the toy. Now I don't know what the toy is. I never bothered looking at it. So let's go through. Mm hmm. We've seen all of these. Rubber ducky, crystal ball, stuffed chicken. A stego buddy. Oh, so cute. So this one is for the saber slime. Let's purchase it and see what it looks like. Oh, look at you. That's cute. Oh, that's nice. Now, none of my slime here are going to use it because I don't actually like the way the saber slimes look. <laughs> Um, so I just, I haven't used them, but I think I am going to end up doing another fashion show just for the saber slime so you can see what all their Largos look like. Uh, but for now, these are my, uh, some of my favorites, you know, the Tangle Mosaics. So they're who I have occupying this area. And you can come down here to check out what's left of this, uh, area that you unlock. And there's a final pod right here. This doesn't really go anywhere. You can just kind of look out and admire the scenery. But yeah, this is pretty much it for the wilds. 
Now before I end this episode, I'm gonna head back to the ranch because I wanna show you what the Miracle Mix and Deluxe upgrades look like on a garden. So let's head there now. All right, so I am back at the ranch and I actually went ahead and demolished one of my plots so I can show you this from scratch. Uh, so here we are and I had the prickle pear in here. So we're gonna go to activate and we're gonna choose garden because I want to plant a tree. Now we're just gonna go ahead and stick this bad boy in there. Bloop. And look, look at it grow. It's so cute. Ah, oh, such a beautiful tree. But we've gotta apply some of the upgrades. Now the nutrient soil and the sprinkler um, are things that we already had. So I'm gonna add the sprinkler, okay? And that's going to make sure that everything's watered and it grows, as you can see, twice as fast. Put that in. So look at that. That's sprinklers. Now let's check out the next one. Um, and that's the nutrient soil, okay? And that's gonna make them yield the maximum harvest. So instead of it, you know, just yielding whatever it does, kind of, I don't know if it was at random or not, but at least it wasn't consistent. Now you're always going to get as much out of your, you know, garden as you possibly can. So let's purchase that. And you can see that that adds like these little crystals in the soil. So you know they're nutrient rich. Uh, now let's go in here and check out the important ones, which are the ones that you unlocked uh, after doing all the trades for Ogden. And that's the Miracle Mix and the Deluxe Upgrade. So the Miracle Mix, um, again, that one's just going to make it that much longer for the fruits and uh, vegetables and everything to rot. So let's go ahead and get that. And you see it adds this beautiful like swirl pattern to the soil and it's even a little bit glowy, a little bit incandescent. Um, I love that and it looks really beautiful at night. So let's just take a look at that. And again, you know, once you have this, your stuff is pretty much not gonna rot. <laughs> so, you know, if you had an issue with that, then you're gonna love the Miracle Mix. But finally, the Deluxe Upgrade, which in this case is going to add two more trees um, because it's just going to increase the number that you can harvest. So let's purchase that. Hubba chow. Woo, look at that. Look at that. Wonderful. Now we've got three trees instead. Don't really need that many, but at least you can see what it does. So you are not going to be hurting for crops at all uh, once you get all of these little upgrades for your gardens. Trust me, you're going to have fruits and vegetables coming out of the wazoo and you're going to get sick of them. So that was it for that demonstration. Well, let's head back to Ogden's retreat to wrap things up. So I've already gone over how you unlock everything, how much of everything you need, and what you can expect once you get here. So if there's anything that I left out, which I probably did, just leave it in the comments below and I'll answer the question. Uh, beyond that, let me know what you decide to do with this area once you unlock it, because I'd really like to see that. Until then, I hope this was useful. Let me know if there are any other uh, how-to videos or tutorials or guides you want me to do about Slime Rancher, and I will see you somewhere on the far, far range.